it's now time to talk about economics continuing 2.3 theory of the firm and uh, this time profits types of profits so you know we've got two kinds of profits first we've got a normal profit or an abnormal super normal profit. Uh, abnormal means the same thing as super normal. This is just the difference. Uh, you'll find abnormals in certain economics textbooks, super normal in other economics textbooks. Don't want to discriminate. I've seen both. Going to be using both. And then you know, alternatively you have normal. Let's continue. So to be able to you know talk about profit and obviously when we're talking about profit here we are talking about the private sector or private sector firms and in this case uh, profit or to make a profit that's what companies set out to do they want their revenue well you know, first we'll explain revenue so revenue this is all of the money that a firm is making uh, just for so everyone knows I this this box this represents the firm this dollar sign represents money and then alternatively to revenue which is you know your income the money that goes to a firm uh, from selling or providing goods and services on the market we have expenditure expenditure and expenditure is money that a firm uh, that a firm uses in you know in the production or sale of goods and services uh, which is you know which are the costs of the FOPs so in our first situation where we have normal profit in this situation we have what's called perfect or near perfect at least competition and in this kind of scenario where we have perfect competition we've got a marketplace where there are no monopolies no duopolies duopolies no bar barriers to entry to entry and there is no hidden knowledge now quickly explaining this monopolies and duopolies you know mono means one duo means two this is when a you know when one company or when two companies take over the entire industry and the entire industry or the entire field you know consists of only one company or of only two companies and what this means is that those companies they can demand whatever price they want for whatever product because you know if there's only one person in the world selling water you're going to pay as much money as they want you to pay for that water because it's something you need whereas what a barrier to entry is uh, this is when you have a market right uh, you have an industry like the automobile industry and you're selling cars so there are two ways to get a car you can either buy a car, you know, you can either buy your car, or you can produce your car in a factory, you know, paying for the FOPs because obviously you've got land, uh, you've got your workers, which is your labor, you have to borrow money, you know, or take a loan, borrow money taking the loan, or invest your money, which is enterprise. This is very risky uh, overall, and um, you have your car this way. And so a barrier to entry is in the automobile industry, in producing cars or selling cars, you need to have a lot of money to start. Because either you're buying all of your cars or you're buying a factory that's on land, you know, potentially renting the land, you're paying all of your workers. This is very, very expensive. And capital, as one of the FOPs, is definitely one of the barriers to entry. And then hidden knowledge, uh, this is where one company has an advantage because it knows something other companies don't know. If you're the only company producing a wheel, 
that is 360 degrees, and everyone else is producing a wheel that is 650 degrees, right? You're going to have all the customers, even if you're telling people to pay you 10 times more for your wheel than they are paying for, you know, this wheel. You're still going to have all the customers because you've, in essence, got a perfect product. You've got, you've got a wheel. You've got what everyone wants. No one wants this 350-degree wheel. And in perfect competition, this doesn't exist. Everyone has perfect knowledge. Everyone knows that a wheel has 360 degrees. Everyone knows how to produce that wheel. Not every wheel is going to be the same in this case, uh, but everyone knows how to do it. There's no, there's no hidden knowledge. And this is perfect competition. So if we go back up here to, to, uh, to normal profit and revenue and expenditure, once again, revenue is the money you make, your income, expenditure is the money you spend. Uh, normal profit is when revenue equals expenditure. And you may be asking yourself, I definitely asked myself at least a couple of times, how do you make money when your income, meaning what you make, equals what you spend. Because in essence, this is what you're getting from your FOPs. So, so yeah, I guess like your income from your FOPs equals what you're spending from your FOPs. Does that make sense? Uh, at first glance, no. I have to be honest, it didn't make sense the first time I looked at it. I saw this and I said, well, you know, if you're spending the same amount of money as you're making, where's, you know, how is your company, you know, staying open? How are you making enough money? How are you making money at all? You know, you know, how is this money going into your personal, into your personal checking account, to your bank? But we're talking about the FOPs. And if you look at them, you know, land. So let's say you're renting land or, or you bought some land. And, you know, that that's, that's part of your FOP but then you look at labor and for labor you've got a bunch of workers and you have to pay them all but remember you are one of these workers you might be the CEO or the CFO or if this is your company you're you're obviously someone up there who you know one of the executives who's making the decisions but ultimately you still have a wage or a uh, salary and part of your firm's expenditure is paying labor, you know, paying wages and salaries to people. And you are one of your workers, or you're one of the workers of your of your company, of your business. And so obviously, you also have a wage or salary. And this is where money is going to you. And this is how uh, you're able to, you know, work in a business where revenue is equal to expenditure. Because you're part of this expenditure. Part of this money, you know, part of this revenue is going to you. And so, obviously, you are part of the expenditure. And this is considered to be a normal profit. Whereas, there's one other profit I mentioned, an abnormal or a supernormal profit. And this is a situation where a company's revenue is greater than their, uh, than their expenditure. Expenditure. And now this is a very complicated situation. This is when you spend ten dollars on your FOPs, and you get twelve dollars for it. Which, in my opinion, I mean, certain companies are able to pull this off. Big, for example, monopolies or duopolies or uh, oligopolies. Uh, this is a, a situation that doesn't happen. Uh, in imperfect competition. This is when you have imperfect competition uh, or when you have a actually I'll, I'll just write this down when you have Im, uh, imperfect competition and just as with perfect competition uh, or near perfect competition you had no barriers to entry, no monopolies, uh, no duopolies. Here you have you have monopolies or duopolies you want police you have barriers to entry uh, additionally 
you know, there is certain hidden knowledge. There are certain hidden knowledge, and uh, sometimes there is even political, political bias, meaning you know there might be a uh, presidential candidate of a country who decides that, oh, you know, I'll, I'm going to tell all these companies that I'll lower taxes and they'll vote for me. So they vote for him, and he lowers the taxes of the companies that voted for him. So these companies, right, they're not paying as much in FOPs uh, because capital, you know, you're, you're your money. If he's lowering taxes, uh, additionally he could be like lowering interest rates. And what that would mean is that you lower uh, capital. Wait, cap. I spelled that completely wrong. Um, capital, right? He, he's lowering in the interest rates, meaning lowering capital, meaning ultimately uh, he's lowering the cost of FOPs. And if he's lowering the cost of FOPs, that means that your your revenue is is going up because you're spending less money even though you're selling as many products or you're saying selling the same amount of products you're providing the same amount of services and on this basis in this imperfect competition with mono uh, with monopolies duopolies barriers to entry hidden knowledge and or po political bias you've got situations where the revenue is greater than expenditure this is called abnormal or sometimes super normal profit. Now quickly going back over what we just spoke of, what we just spoke about uh, as soon as I find a tiny bit more space, which I shall not find, uh, we'll, we'll have to do it on the margin. We spoke about profit. Profit. Ideally on the pr private or in the private sector right so now you know when your revenue your income is equal to your expenditure you have a normal profit whereas if it's greater your income or your revenue is greater than your expenditure you have an abnormal or a supernormal profit which does not happen in a you know in a perfect competition situation it's only when you have monopolies or duopolies or something funny and a mishappening in the marketplace